Hi. This short video will give you tips on researching the Ames Brief Hark issue if you've been assigned the uh, entrapment angle. Keep in mind, uh, I cannot cover everything surrounding this particular issue in a short video. I will offer follow-up live classes that cover some of the keyword searches that you're going to be able to run. You all have access to this handout. You can simply click on the hyperlinks to run the searches yourself if you want. But what I wanted to focus on for this particular lecture are the materials that were provided to you in the packet. You know, sometimes you're given known documents to start with. And in a situation like that, a lot of times you can get everything you need without having to run a lot of follow-up keyword searches. So that's really my primary focus here. Again, as I said, you all have access to the handout. I've uploaded all of the materials to a twin course from lawschool.thompsonreuters.com. You just sign in, go to twin, and you'll see under Westlaw Resources, Harvard Ames materials. So Three of the cases that were in the packet, I just simply found them using a string side. Keep in mind that if you're using Westlaw for any of your issues, it's always really important to folder items. Folders are going to serve a number of purposes. We're going to talk about that towards the end of the lecture, but make sure you create a new folder title it whatever you want and save your materials in that folder. I already have USB Jones in this folder. You'll see that icon right here, letting me know that I saved it to that folder last this, this time last year, actually. Jones, again, one of the cases that you retrieved. Keep in mind that when you are looking at a case on Westlaw, always want to start with the head notes and the synopsis. You already know what the synopsis and head notes are. By the way, another thing that I, I would recommend, if you don't, if you want to have as much real estate as possible, it's okay for you to collapse that uh, that outline. But synopsis, as you know, is simply a summary of the of the facts, the issue, and the holding of the decision. Always a good place to start to make sure you're, you know, generally in the right area, and the head notes are an editorial written summary of every single issue in dispute in the case. Head notes are just a great way for you to zero in on the topics you are researching. For example, you probably don't care about any commerce or weapons related issues with respect to Jones. You know, you're, you're really interested in this particular case for those, uh, criminal law issues dealing with entrapment. And uh, I'm going to just target one of those issues at this point. Issue number 11, head note number 11 deals with, deals with entrapment. You'll see a summary of that issue here where they talk about the standard elements. Keep in mind that you cannot quote a head note in a brief or memo. So if you wanted to jump into the opinion to see where the judge discusses that issue, you have the ability to copy the, the court's language here. Another tip, if you want to take language, make sure you're copying with reference in standard format. Standard is blue book format. It will copy that quote and let you paste it in blue book format in your Word document. Another feature that's really nice there will be times when you will want to compare the, the language to different cases or courts used that looked similar. One of the things that we give you is an ability to add to compare. I've, I've already actually added a couple of cases, US v. Jones and US v. Davis. And uh, this is really where they were talking about inducement with respect to entrapment. And uh, it's it's showing us the similarities and I could see the differences as well. So that's a nice new feature that we, we give you there. All right, back to the head note. 
Head notes serve three purposes. Number one, they're going to provide you with a summary of each issue of law. Number two, every single head note from every single case resides somewhere in the West topic and key number system. That is simply a gigantic outline of, of every single head note from every single case. It currently has close to, well, just under 500 main legal topics criminal law being one of those topics, and over 100,000 subtopics. So this specific issue, the elements of entrapment, has been classified to the topic criminal law, subtopic Roman numeral two defenses in general, subtopic under that, entrapment, what constitutes entrapment in general. That last number is going to be important in a second. I said that head notes cover or answer three questions or, or give you three bits of information. One, summary of every issue in the case. Two, they let you know where that head note was classified in the digest. And three, head notes oftentimes will give us an ability to hone in on other cases that cited to your case for that specific point of law. And here you'll see that there are three cases that cited to Jones for this uh, entrapment elements issue that was uh, discussed in Jones. I'm going to get to that a little bit later, but what I'm interested in and what you would be interested in doing at this point is maybe getting cases in the Ninth Circuit classified to the topic entrapment, what constitutes entrapment in general. One click, I get all of those cases in the Ninth Circuit. Now, a couple of things you can do here that, uh, that allow you to narrow this. We got 131 of these 131. You know, how many of them discuss the, I'm gonna make sure I spell this correctly, predispo, whether the defendant had a predisposition or was predisposed to, uh, to commit the crime. Remember the defense of entrapment fails if the defendant was predisposed. Type that in, and I've knocked it down to 38. Much smaller list, and this is something you could start with. You could select these, add them to a folder. You can clear this and get back to your original list. We could also filter by jurisdiction. Another thing you will always want to do when retrieving a list of uh, cases from a topic in key number search you want to see which cases are the leading cases. I could sort this by most cited. And you'll see that Sorrell's is the Supreme Court case that's been cited most frequently, 400, excuse me, 449 times. Sherman, another case that's going to be important to you, has been cited quite frequently. The case in the Ninth Circuit that's been cited uh, most is uh, Reynoso uh, Uloa. Let's take a look at that particular case. Jump into that case and, and you'll see from Reynoso, it jumps us into this case at that specific point of law. Now, another way of uncovering additional relevant documents is to use something called citing references. This is an important case for you, no doubt. There are 383 documents total that have cited to Reynoso Uloa. Now, if I needed background, I could look at secondary sources, law reviews and treatises that discuss it. If I wanted cases that analyzed this particular case, there are 108 of them that have done so. I could take a look at this list. I could filter the list a number of ways. You'll see on the left-hand side, I could filter by jurisdiction, depth of treatment. What is that? Well, you should know this already, but depth of treatment is just a signal to you about how much discussion each of these cases afforded your case. When you're looking at a list like this, the four bar references are gonna be the most important. Those will be cases that analyze your case for at least one full printed page of text. Three-bar cases contain a substantial analysis of your case because 
they analyze your case, discuss it for more than a paragraph, but less than a printed page. And then it goes from three to two. And finally, one bar references. One bar references do not analyze your case at all. So don't waste any time. They simply mention your case in a string site or CEG US v Reynoso. All right, so that's something you could start with if you wanted to use citing references. But let me give you a shortcut. And it's something I talked about a few minutes ago. I told you that head notes serve three purposes. Let's focus on that third purpose. This particular issue from Reynoso is going to be important to you. You want to get other cases that analyze this case for this specific point of law. We know that there are 100 cases total that have discussed Reynoso. Over uh, exactly half of them cite to this case for this specific point of law. So I could click this link and what this actually does, it takes us into citing references and automatically applies a filter. It's only looking for cases that have cited to Reynoso for issue number one. See, just a much easier starting point. Now, if you wanted to, you could maybe add your own terms. If you wanted to knock out the one bar references, you could. You know, I only want to look at four, three, and two bar references. If I want to knock out state cases, I only want Supreme Court and maybe Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals cases. I can apply all of these filters once I've narrowed in on a really good head note. Knocked it down to 24, much more manageable number. Another tip when you were looking at a list of results, your passwords are set to either less detail in terms of the detail level or more detail. Make sure you have them set to most detail. Just a much more efficient way for you to go through a list of documents. Makes it a little bit easier for you to identify relevant documents. Okay, a couple of other final tips. As I said, I can't really get into the keyword searching uh, in this really short lecture. Folders. I mentioned to you earlier that these are important. Well, why are they important? A couple of things that are, are going to be helpful for you with respect to folders. First, you know, it's a good idea to save everything to your folders because once you're done, you have an ability to just deliver your documents in one shot. You know, whether I email or download, I would recommend sending your files in zip format, it's gonna compress and send everything as single documents. That way you get to open up the documents individually. Another nice feature regarding the uh, folders is something called folder analysis. When you add items to folders, Westlaw gives you an ability to, oh, actually I should, take a step back. When you add items to folders, Westlaw is actually looking at the documents you've added to the folders, looking for common patterns. And what it will do is break down the issues that it saw that were common to the documents in your folders and recommend additional documents that are not in your folder. You know, so if I wanted to look at you know, issue number five, admissibility of evidence of other offenses and rebuttal defense of entrapment. It's recommending 10 cases and five secondary sources that are not in my folder. This is a way for you to make sure that you haven't missed anything. I mean, that's oftentimes the hardest thing about research. How do I know I'm finished? How do I know I didn't miss anything? Final tip. You all have access to something called Quick Check. This isn't something you need to worry about until you've you completed the draft of your brief and you're ready to submit the final version of the brief. On the Westlaw Edge homepage, you'll see Quick Check. Make sure you run your brief, a draft, and the final version through Quick Check because when you do, 
It's going to recommend documents that you didn't have in your brief. It's going to go through your brief, look at your arguments, and recommend additional documents. It's going to warn you about cases and statutes that have uh, severe negative history or that aren't overrule risk. Both of those are really bad, potentially. It also has a quote check feature. It checks your quotes with the actual quotes on Westlaw and lets you know of any differences. And by the way, it also has something called a pin site error checker. So if your quotations, you were quoting from the wrong page, it actually would alert you to that as well. As I said, I can't cover everything in the handout. Uh, you know, the keyword searches are available here. I'm also going to be uh, offering live sessions that are going to be just as short as this lecture and the scope of those sessions will cover keyword searching. Hope it was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.